I know this has been said many times already, but yes, things still are somehow getting even a bit worse for CD Projekt Red and in turn Cyberpunk 2077. And this is really one of those situations that just kind of sucks, regardless of how you feel about CDPR, how you feel about their marketing or even the release of Cyberpunk. As I'm sure many of you remember, earlier this year we heard how CDPR themselves were hacked. Hackers gained access to their internal servers and stole a ton of things. Most notably was the source code for Cyberpunk and the next-gen version of The Witcher 3, and although hackers supposedly auctioned that off and had a private buyer pick it up, we did see later on that that source code was leaked publicly, but one of the other major components of this all was a ton of general company files were also stolen, this being employee details, contracts, legal documents, etc. And unfortunately, it seems like much of this information is now out in the open and spreading, this being showcased, unfortunately, by a recent fortune post that has now been deleted as well as the archive of that post has been deleted but from that post what we could see is around 200 gigabytes of files leaked covering various categories things like passport information for employees and apparently even the CEO's passport leaked ID numbers for employees tax documents for employees and of course corresponding information around taxes and some of the information you need to file taxes which is pretty important contracts as well as a ton of other legal info again there's there's literally 200 gigabytes of files here. And although I don't want to show it off in this video because there are names contained within this, there are dumps of the raw file names that are contained within this, and you could just see they go on for ages. There is a ton of information here. And as if this wasn't bad enough, it was just the employees at CDPR. Unfortunately, of course, since this was their internal server, the files here actually date back nearly 15 years. So it's not only affecting current employees, but past employees also. And even things like temporary employees, People who just worked on the game or one of the games for a limited time now have some of their information out there. Obviously, permanent employees have a bit more that has been leaked, but all around, this is just a horrible situation. Now, of course, the threat of this was looming since early 2021 when that original hack occurred and it was made clear that personal employee information was taken. But I feel like now, when you can actually just see the sheer quantity of data out there and how many years of employee employment records have been leaked, it hits a little bit differently. You really see the severity of this. And I imagine many of the employees actually impacted by this leak are also feeling it as a bit more real right now. Unfortunately, it doesn't really seem like there's much that can be done. Now that it's openly online, it's going to be out there. And there hasn't been any news or updates around CDPR or their collaboration with the police and trying to find out who the hackers were. Although naturally, if the investigation's ongoing, I don't think we'd be getting day-by-day -day updates or anything. But again, this is just one of those leaks that sucks. There's really no redeeming quality here. It sucks for the employees who of course already probably had a pretty tough time with the backlash around cyberpunk. And now just add this as the icing on the cake, it's an all around really crappy situation. But in the days following this news going live, we have seen the stock price drop a bit. It's not really clear if this is connected or just the stock price dropping in general. Although completely unrelated to this, we actually have heard from several members of CDPR about some details about what's going on right now at the company, as well as an idea of what's coming next. Next, and this is definitely more on the positive side. A few months ago now, we saw that the Quest director left CD Projekt Red after 12 years with the company. But we did just learn that a new Quest director was promoted, that with Hal Sasko. You've probably seen him a ton, he was in a lot of the marketing, as well as just those videos or streams CDPR was doing, both before release and now after release. And he will now, of course, be the new Quest director, and it seems like this is just great news overall. He's had a very public presence, and he just recently made a post on Twitter that I think a lot of people will be happy to see, where they're working internally right now on a retrospective for the quests of Cyberpunk, gaining feedback from the community and literally in that Twitter post asking people to tell them what worked and what didn't with the existing Cyberpunk quests to reflect, analyze what they did right or wrong, and hopefully improve on things going forward. And that's one of those things you just really like to see from companies, especially a company the size of CD Projekt Red. And considering this post was made just two days before the quest director news went public, this is somebody who's going to have a real influence now on the direction of this game, or really the direction of subsequent updates and expansions for this game, and for me at least, seeing them taking this retrospective approach right off the bat is a good thing. Although separate from that, we did hear from the CD Projekt Red CEO also, this from a Bloomberg interview, where he does mention he feels like the company overall have learned from the fiasco around Cyberpunk, saying the retrospection of the project that didn't go exactly as planned has triggered a strong motivation 
motivation for change. I deeply believe that the game's perception may significantly improve in the future. And he goes on to say how he doesn't expect a wow effect, but rather a gradual rebuilding of sales. And then he separately just mentions how they plan to increase hiring going forward back to pre-pandemic levels, which equates to around a 20% increase in the company size per year. And though this is just a few quotes from the CEO, it's another one that I think actually sounds pretty good. Overall, that's straying away from a singular wow effect or a big moment, and rather just kind of improving the game over time. With some of these games that have relatively controversial launches, that seems to be what works, a gradual improvement. And over time, we have been seeing that somewhat with Cyberpunk, although there still is a bit more desire. There's still some lingering bugs and stuff that I just feel like should have been fixed already, and I think a lot of people share that. So it'll be interesting to see how the game continues to evolve and improve, or whatever happens next. It's been a couple months now since patch 1.3, and patch 1.31 came a month after patch 1.3, and the player base, on PC at least, where we could actually monitor it, has been pretty stable, which is actually quite notable, because Cyberpunk has not had a stable player rate and had massive declines earlier on, which is natural with a new game, and especially a highly controversial game, but this is definitely a good indication of where things are headed. Obviously on PC, the modding scene is really doing well right now, we just saw Mega Mod, I just made a video on it, it's a fabulous reason to reinstall the game and give it another try. But otherwise, as far as the next gen version, it seems less and less likely it's coming this year as months go on, and even things like where the next DLCs are, or what the next update's going to include, or even just when the expansion's coming. All of that is unknown right now, and it definitely seems like CDPR is deliberately being a bit quieter, because before, talking too much got them in trouble, and I don't necessarily hate this approach. Although on the topic of what's next, we actually got some clarification on something that's not happening or kind of happening in a different way, that being the Parallels questline for Cyberpunk. This is another one that I made a full video on a while ago, but to summarize, there's just a ton of mysterious stuff going on with the Parallels questline in this game. Not to just shout myself out, but my video was a decent recap on what was going on and why things are so strange between the Mr. Blue Eyes guy, some of the rings appearing, all these weird statues with monks wearing the same rings that maybe connected dealing with mind control, and just seemed like one of those storylines that would be extended or continued in the DLC, and that's what I was actually speculating in the video would be one of the first expansions. Seems like I was wrong, because the quest designer behind this one actually took to Twitter to clarify things. Somebody was praising the quest line on Twitter, and he does mention, yeah, the parallel stuff is mine, but you've seen most of that storyline now, outside of the epilogue and some media stuff on TV. My goal for that one was to have V make a choice, but not be around for the consequences. Story isn't over, but V's part is. I know a lot of people really, really hate that this storyline doesn't have a bigger conclusion in the game, but I stand by it. Bigger equals more definitive. I also didn't want to let players crack open a conspiracy by themselves in a few hours. It's just a thing I don't like in games very much. There are clues all over the game about a grand conspiracy playing out in the background, but V isn't going to overturn it herself. This is honestly all super interesting to me. It's not really clear what's going on with this mystery, but there definitely seems to be a mystery, and it does seem like it is somewhat solvable. This entire subreddit's dedicated to trying to figure out what's going on here, and it's not really clear if this is all tied to the Parallels directly, or Mr. Blue Eyes as a faction or a larger embodiment, but it's definitely an interesting rabbit hole to get down if you're interested. Either way, that's my update around the current situation with Cyberpunk slash CDPR. Some good news, but definitely some really, really bad news here today, unfortunately. But with that said, as always, again, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope to see you all later.